So my name is Katherine Clayback. I'm one of the genetic counselors here at Roswell Park. And my role as a genetic counselor is to see people with different personal and family histories of cancer, looking to see can we find any of those underlying genetic hereditary factors. We know that ovarian cancer is one of those cancer types that are more likely to be hereditary, have one of these underlying genetic predispositions. The thought is that maybe up to about 25% of all ovarian cancers are due to one of these genetic mutations. And so while most cancers still might be random and sporadic, the higher chance of there being a genetic factor really makes us pay attention to it. And that's what we encourage is anyone who has a personal history of ovarian cancer or a close family member, you know, a parent, sibling, child, aunt, uncle, grandparent, we always recommend doing that genetic testing because the likelihood is higher than for other types of cancer. Family history for us is something that's really important in genetics. Anytime that we speak with someone, we often ask them to gather all of their personal and family history before meeting us. You know, we always encourage people to know how old family members were when they were diagnosed, the types of cancer that they had. And even beyond just ovarian cancer, we look for other types of cancers as well. And so for certain family histories, if there's multiple women with ovarian cancer, there is an ovarian cancer registry where we're trying to gather that information to further our understanding for the future. And so for anyone who carries one of these genetic mutations, we know that it increases the risk to ever develop a cancer. And even though the risk isn't 100%, we do know that it is higher than that average population risk. For the BRCA genes, those BRCA genes, we quote that the lifetime risk of ovarian cancer might be somewhere between about 12 to 40% in someone's lifetime. So even though it's not 100% risk, it is a jump over that average person, and that's why we want to know about that for your care. Typically for an increased risk for ovarian cancer, we do recommend one of those surgical approaches, removing the ovaries, removing the fallopian tubes before that cancer ever develops. For us, that surgery is what best reduces the risk to ever have that type of cancer. One of the most important topics of that conversation really is saying, well, what's the best time to go forward with a surgery? We certainly want every woman to have as many children as she'd like. We like to get people closer to natural menopause because we know that those ovaries produce important hormones for our body. They help keep us healthy in some ways. And so even though we might not move forward with a surgery, Sometimes there are other options. You know, we know that we can try ultrasounds and blood levels. And sometimes there are other factors like taking birth control pills that can also help to reduce the risk in the meantime. One of the more encouraging advances for us in the world of genetics and medicine is some of these targeted treatment options. We know that in some cases, if we can find an underlying genetic factor, it does give your team a target to say, well, what's the best type of treatment that could work? Is there a specific chemotherapy? Is there another option to help ensure that we get the best outcome possible?